Oh my lordy, good morning. It's a good morning to say hello. And we're gonna gonna have a love morning. And it's not much of a show, but we share the gratitude inside us. And we sing it from our cars, from our office, from a bus. And if we don't have anything to share, just sit down and be aware because we're filled with everything inside our bodies it's got to keep us alive and that is better than naughties uh so so doing so good i was doing so good good morning good morning aaron good morning everyone good morning welcome to love morning i am john halcyon and this is a daily practice of sharing gratitude of focusing on what we have to be appreciating in our worlds and also trying to establish, remember that we are ambassadors of love and we can spend some energy today being that, being agents of good, being <sighs> pushing the dial in the direction of love and kindness and compassion. And that can mean self-care. Maybe your love ambassador role today is just taking care of yourself and getting through the day. Or maybe you've got a little extra oomph and you can say hello and good morning to your neighbors and you can give a ride to a friend or you can call one of your parents or a friend or send a text saying, just thinking about you. Look at that. I'll, I'll, just so quickly, we suddenly become part of the healing of the world. Ta-da! Good morning, Daniel. Good morning, Gerbot. Good morning. Trish, hello, and good morning, Chris. Anybody else have something that they are grateful for and want to share? Good morning, Dana. Boy, I don't know if I'm grateful or not. I, I am certainly been having some fun playing with AI the last couple of days. I, uh, I've made a couple songs and music videos from songs that I've made with the Suno app, I think is what it's called. I just exported one right before this that it's a, it was an anthem for a pink haired man. And I'm like, oh my God. So I think I'm gonna try to make something with that. Although it, it takes 30 seconds to make a song and then I spend like three hours making a video for it. So I guess as long as I'm having fun, right? Whoo, it's gonna be a wacky future. Like the other thing, so, uh, with that I've been, as I've been making the videos, the, the last one I just made, so I've been using the Bing image maker to make vi pictures, but the pictures are the wrong dimension. So then I bring the picture into Photoshop and I say, make it this size and just generate, like it's a picture of a, a robot in a forest. And so I, I stretch the picture, I go fill in what it would be. And it just makes it look like it always knew. It, like, it's so, it really, the the tools that we have as a, content creator are unbelievable. And I think the way that I have to look about it is, is it fun to create? Not like, what do I, what are people going to like? And how am I going to compete with people with all these tools? And how am I going to compete with AI? Because that's, that's, that's just insane. Like we are, there's so much pressure right now to create content and, and get views and, and, and use these tools to maximize your output and create three post three times a day. And I'm like, dude, that is, that doesn't sound fun. This is, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. GenCraft. I don't know what that is, Tish, Trish. What, what, uh, what kind of tool is that? Uh, <laughs> Aaron says, you're not broken. You're broke in. I've been ridden hard and put away wet. Uh, Daniel says, I am grateful for being able to encourage and help friends along with their own better health today. Yeah, I love it. Smile every day, says Aaron. I think that's a good, a good self-direction. It's it's sometimes dangerous when you tell other people to smile every day. Like, why aren't you smiling? But I agree. It's, and what I have, you know, they putting your mouth in a smile affects your the the way your brain works so just kind of even making yourself smile i have found that when i am writing if i put a smile emoji i smile like like if 
I, I make the facial expression of what I'm typing. So uh, if you ever catch me in a, uh, on webcam making funny faces, I'm probably trying to emote what I'm saying. Um, good morning, Gracie. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glad you're here live. It's what day? It's Saturday? Yeah. Oh, and AI for illustrations. Cool. Yeah, I've been using um, Midjourney, but Midjourney, I, I feel like I'm not, I don't, I haven't studied hard enough to make it do what I want it to do. Whereas the, the Bing image creator, uh, I'm consistently getting things that I can use for stuff. Um, I've been helping people with like uh, some il album covers and things. And, and I'm struck, I'm conflicted because I don't, you know, I don't want to, obviously it would be better if these tools, it would be better if they didn't exist and we were hiring artists more. But the truth is a lot of people were not hiring artists anyways. So going from not having access to original art to being able to create original art that you can use for things is awesome. Now, if you are a professional artist, is this got to be the most frustrating thing that's ever happened in your career? I, it's got to be. Ah, uh, good morning. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I had a an awesome day of connection yesterday. I had a morning walk and lunch with my friend Brandon, who I've known since I was five years old, and then I went to see, I picked up my dad in my new car and we went to go see Dune 2. It's my second time seeing it. And then I brought him home and had dinner with my mom and dad. And my mom made a beautiful vegetarian meal and, and gluten-free cookies. And I was so stuffed, Woo! but I'm so grateful that I, my parents live nearby and I can hang out with them. In fact, let me reframe something I was thinking this morning. I, I, I struggle with heat. And as it's, it's starting to cross the threshold from long sleeve weather to where as little as I possibly can weather, I was starting to get a little bummed. But I think instead of thinking like, where could I move? I think I'm gonna start going, I'm so lucky to live close to my parents. I'm so glad that I get to see them so often. And if that means I need to hang out in air conditioning more often, so be it. Chris says, after seeing my Facebook memories of the lockdown four years ago today, I'm grateful I'm still here along with my business. That is such a trip to see the the Facebook memories right now. I agree. I, I was looking at some of mine this morning and actually, oh, I saw some one yesterday. That was kind of like a little like, whoa, for me. Um, it said, it was, I made this big, this was a big text post. It says, after five months, I have decided to end my sobriety experiment. Because um, I was sober when the lockdown started. I was, I, I had recognized whatever four years and five months ago that I had bad habits and I was kind of in a bad place with ketamine uh, specifically. And so I was on a indefinite break and then we got locked in our homes and I was like, if there's ever a time that it's okay to get high, this is it. And I justified that. And, and then I, as I think, I think a lot of people fell into this trap of really getting intoxicated um, liberally during lockdown, which I definitely did. So it was interesting to see this, this like, um, I, you know, I'd been sober for five months and then, you know, gave it all up. I have been now been sober for almost 13 months but I'm in a very different place and doing it for different reasons. And I, I, I'm not concerned about uh, falling off or on the wagon, whatever they say. 
Good morning, Dana. Dana says, I agree. There is so much power in a smile. I'm so grateful for my massage clients. Hmm, nice. That is such a, I, I imagine that is a very fascinating and unique profession. I lived with for four, five years with a massage therapist and my co-host for Stay Sparked, Betsy is a massage therapist. And, and it's so beautiful to hear you know, the, I mean, you, you're a healer, you, you touch people that, you know, and we're all starved for touch and, and the, the body, you know, it needs maintenance. And so I imagine that's gotta be really rewarding. Gerbot says, I'm grateful to be able to laugh deeply and be free from depression. Woo, woo, three cheers to that. Um, Gracie says, I'm grateful for not letting an unpleasant encounter that took place last night interfere with my moment of ascension. I am rising. They are not in my dimension. Remain 3D if you wish. I am headed to 5D. Thank you for testing me. Uh, th this week's episode of Stay Sparked is about clearing and conflict resolution. And uh, we talk a little bit about, you know, when it's, when it's worth the energy and the effort to kind of try to work through stuff. And when is it kind of okay to just say, I'm moving on. Good morning, Brent. Juan, good morning. Juan is grateful for a great day, even though I got a cold today. Not COVID, just a cold. You got to count your blessings. Exactly. Um, I am grateful that my beloved Lisa is safe at her retreat in Ojai right now. And uh, that she had a, a very productive visit to, I think it's called the Guitar Salon, something place in, in Newport Beach where she got to, uh, try out all these like super awesome guitars until she found the one that she wanted guitar salon. That's what it's called. And she found the perfect guitar. And so I'm super happy for her and grateful to, um, yeah, great. I, 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 I so appreciate her. I saw this meme. It was, it was talking about marriage, but really about partnership. It said that, you know, you want to, the, the recipe for success is both partners feel that they are lucky to have the other one. They both feel the other one is like out of their league and not from a place of insecurity, self belittlement, but from a place of awe and inspiration. And when you have that kind of mutual respect, that's kind of the magic sauce. And I'm like, well, that's, that's really, that is Lisa and I, we're both like, wow, wow, you're awesome. And, uh, it feels it's, it's, uh, it makes it great. Like, like, you know, she, she shares with me her experience shopping for guitar. I'm like, oh man, that's fascinating. Good morning to you in Malta. Hello, Penny. Um, I have never been to Malta, but I have drank a malted. Anyone else have anything to, they're grateful for? I am grateful that I'm a, gonna go meet up with my friend, Steven. He's gonna help with some uh, repairs and handyman work in, for my folks. Um, I am, I'm grateful that I'm feeling healthy. I'm grateful that my nerve pain is not affecting me right now. And it hasn't for the past, you know, month, over a month, almost two months. And I gotta, I'm, I'm, I need to remind myself to be more diligent in the other self-care things that I need to do. My stretches, I kind of, I kind of, have been a little sloppy with my physical therapy the last week. And I do not want to 
I got to remember the consequences, the potential. It's, it, it's so crazy how, like, I have to remind myself how terrible that pain chapter was. If you were ever checked in, you, well, I didn't, I wasn't even, I couldn't even do this because I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't find anything to be grateful for. I mean, I'm so miserable. So I need to, I need to try to access, even if I can't remember how bad it was, remember the things I told myself and remember the thoughts that I had of, and the, the despair I had and go, what are you willing to do to not return there? A lot. So it's good discipline. Good morning, Razorblade. Hello to you in Australia. Keep surrendering and listen to your body. Thank your body every day. Amen to that. That's one of the great things about this practice, I think, is that it, uh, it really helps me to, to revisit the baseline of, okay, wait, oh, that's right. I'm grateful that my body is working. Oh, I'm grateful that I feel safe today. Oh, I'm grateful that my problems are awesome. All this, I've got the kind of papers all around here and I've got a lot of things to do. I'm a little, I'm grateful for these problems. Like one of my, one of my struggles is I, I, I bought a new car with the understanding that I haven't fully researched everything and I'm not sure if it's what I want, but they have a 30 day return policy. CarMax is a thing you can buy a car and any, no questions asked. If, if 30 days under 1500 miles, you say it's not the car I wanted. So I bought it thinking like, okay. Like, I think this is what I want, but why don't I drive it for a few weeks? And if I decide I want a newer car or different features, I can always return it. And I'm realizing that there is a reason to just make a decision and stand by it. Because I am giving a lot of thought to, do I want to get safety features that I don't have? And like, what would it be worth to me? Like I'm thinking about like my car cost X and the, the upgrades that I'm looking for are like 1.5 X. So it's a significant increase in the price of the car. Um, but what if it saved me from an accident that, you know, may give me back pain for years? Like what would I be willing to pay? for a feature that stopped me from being an accident. Like, ah. so I'm trying to, to figure all that out. But those are good problems. These are great problems. Uh, Gerbot is grateful for feeling good today. Yes. Um, Juan says, The, my nerve pain did break me down and it gave you some wonderful lessons. Pain is a good teacher. Totally. And it really, you know, I was thinking this morning, I'm not sure if this is fully formed or will come out right, but like, I am, I am, uh, I'm turning 53 in May and there are aspects of my body that are demonstrating the effects of decades and decades of existence. You know, um, I have basically led a healthy life, but not uh, taking the care, long-term care, like some people do. Like my dad totally is like super good about his health and then my brother's super good about his health. I'm pretty good. And so as I notice things with my body, my skin, my, my hair thinning and things, I had this thought this morning that I'm so grateful that I found Lisa and that I'm so in love and that I find her so beautiful and she finds me so handsome. And so the things that I like, worry or like, oh, this, this is, this is a problem. Like I'm starting to get a belly, you know, or I'm getting hair on my back or I'm thinning, you know, like she doesn't see those things as problems. She sees me as beautiful. 
the way they, I see her as beautiful. Like there's nothing she could do that would make me go, mm, gosh, with that haircut, you're just not pretty. Or mm, now that you've gained 20 pounds, like I just, mm. I mean, it, it, this, that would not affect my attractiveness to her. And because I feel that towards her, I, I can accept that she can feel it towards me. And so the aging stuff that would really be difficult for a less grounded version of myself, I can go, all right, well, I'm doing this with Lisa and we're going to get old together. And I don't have to fall into my old headspace of, I need to like make the best version of myself. So I'm a, I'm a, a desirable dating person on, and people swipe right for me. Uh, I've never actually met somebody with by swiping, but I imagine I would have to or try to if I if I was wasn't so blessed by meeting Lisa in a magical way. Anyway, I, I just was thinking this morning about how like how different my experience aging is and how perfect the timing is of this chapter of of not trying to fight to maintain my youth but uh, having a partner and to riding off into this uh, second half of life sunset. Um, and I, I apologize if that's, you know, I know that not, that I'm very lucky to, to have this connection. And I also recognize that Lisa and I haven't even known each other a year. So, it would be it would be naive of me to say it's so awesome it's always going to be awesome like we could be in an extended honeymoon phase that um shifts i don't think so because of the level of respect on a human level that's i feel as much deeper than uh you know the chemical high of somebody but i don't know and i also i guess what i'll say is that like i don't want to if you are, if you do not have that anchor, I don't want to rub it in your face or or make anyone feel bad. I'm just commenting on something that I happen to be very grateful for right now. Um, Razorblade is grateful for family and friends staying in touch while I work in another state. I didn't even know you had states in Australia. See, this is geographically ignorant this is damn americans um gracie says i feel you on that i'm definitely going to invest more in my body with that being said it's self-worth love then you exude it and it brings someone in like you did it's a journey that's super true too you know and in fact what Lisa said, one of the first things she noticed about me was my presence and the way I held myself and walked and interacted with people. She goes, wow, that guy is, he walks through the world with confidence, you know, and it, that was like super attractive, more so than my chiseled features or anything. I had, I had uh, natural colored hair when I met her too. Um, Yeah. Anyone else want to share any gratitude before we head off into our days and spread these love ambassador vibes or, 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 or set an intention for how you want to be today? Or I'm going to focus on being patient, being a good listener, trying to spread a little bit of positivity to all those that I cross paths with. I'm going to try to spend some energy doing creative work today trying to avoid getting trapped scrolling. Don't tell anyone the pink is not natural, Daniel. Shh. Sarah, good morning. Sarah says, I'm grateful for my life. Surviving pulmonary embolisms last week. Awesome doctor's care. Love for my family and friends. A new Al-Anon program and a sponsor to guide me as I heal old trauma. Wow, that is a deep and powerful healing space that you're in. Thank you for sharing. Good morning, Natasha from the Pacific Northwest. Natasha is grateful for my grateful that my body is healthy enough to continue with spring garden prep. 
I have a driveway of cedar chips that need to be wheelbarrowed to the backyard for landscaping. Ooh, that's, I can smell it. Yum. Dana, you are so welcome. And thank you, Sarah. Thank you for joining this practice and being a part of it. Thank you, Dana. Um, oops. Juan is grateful that my 90 year old mom is feeling better. It's been a not easy month, but things are looking up. Mm. I, I, I had this, I can't remember if I mentioned this, but I had a, a, a incredible conversation with my mom a couple of days ago about end of life and about, she mentioned a book called, I think it's called being human. And the idea being that it is a trap to believe that the, in, the goal of being a human is to stay alive as long as possible. And that instead we need to focus on quality of life. And, but, you know, it's a hard thing, you know, and I think it really takes a spiritual uh, perspective to, to not have fear about death and about what happens after death. Um, I read something yesterday. I wonder if it, yeah, that's right. But I, I believe that the existence in this, how many people are here? So I, I, I wrote something that reminds me of this. I could write, I could read something that's pretty damn, all right, I'm going to read a romantic thing if you, if you want to stick around here. If you don't, that's okay. But my spiritual beliefs are such that this lifetime is a episode, like a piece of a thread of a very long fiber, you know? Um, okay, so let's see if I can read this. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. It's kind of a poetry prose love letter to Lisa. Intertwined, nestled under sheets and blankets, legs wrapped around legs, around torsos, arms holding each other and supporting necks, fully relaxed and surrendered to the present bellies pulsing in and out with breath, each inhale perfectly complementing the other's exhale. We are this one perfect thing. Like alternating ventricles of a beating heart, our skin touches each other in a dozen places. Our breath circles between us, mo molecule, molecules shared inside one of us, then the other. I lay in blissful connection, so aware of the magic of the moment. This is perfect now. I start to feel the presence of the woman connected to me, this other half to my physical body. I start to feel the history of her spirit. I feel the, all the days and years of her experiences. I, the, I feel the rich depth of thousands of struggles and triumphs, countless moments that led her to being this magnificent presence in my arms. I have the awareness that our lives have only been physically touching for about 300 days but I somehow feel connected to all her days before we met. And I have the sense for a moment that these months we've known each other are just one stretch of connection on a much, much longer timeline. We are each infinite threads that have overlapped and intertwined many times before and will braid and separate many times beyond these current lifetimes. A few seconds spent falling into this eternal weaving before I'm back in the present tears in my eyes, overwhelmed with gratitude for the beating heart of our bodies and breath. Ah. I just rewatched Interstellar. Uh, that was, um, yeah, Lisa and I just rewatched it. I, I totally forgot that movie. I only remembered the one scene at the end and I totally forgot the whole thing. It was fun to rewatch. Thank you. Ah, thank you, Sarah. 
Sarah asks, any tips I found on reducing scrolling? It can be a slippery slope despite our awareness. You know, I guess the phase I'm in right now is, is trying to just keep reminding myself how the odds are stacked against us and how this everything about this system has been designed to keep us scrolling. And so I, I don't have a good answer, but more just like whether that is, I guess I don't have it right now, but I mean, maybe I need to get a timer or I need to, I don't know what it is, but the, just the awareness that if you are not actively working to reduce your scrolling, especially with reels and, you know, or TikTok, like it's so designed to keep you going. And it's even, and it's, and it's analyzing your behaviors even more so than you think, you know, like you're being shown things that get you to look at more, even if you don't ask for it, you know, it just starts to, and, and, and that, that's, that's how algorithms and AI is, is starting to really change the way we behave in ways that we're not aware of yet. And that is, um, I think the, the step right now is just be aware of that, be aware of that so that we can um, try to start to put in procedures or, imp or, or, you know, on the calendar, walk away from the computer time um, or, I don't, I don't use one yet, but like then the tools that, that monitor and give you ding, ding, you know, you, you've now used up your time for this site. Um, ooh, Natasha still hates reels. Wow. Okay. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's stay, stay, uh, pull back. It's, it's such an easy slip into the way our minds and attention spans work and the way that this, that they set up, you know, the, the, for the, it's like the infinite scroll of a feed, but with the video stuff is whoo, so much, so much temptation. Um, and I guess what I've been, I mentioned a few times here lately is that I, uh, I want to welcome the challenge of making that content, but I don't want to feel like a worker bee that has to make that content. You know, like I like, I've been talking for 35 minutes here. That's so contrary. I mean, that's, that doesn't work in this modern world. I guess it works for like, maybe you could tell me like, why does this work for you to, to, to be able to, spend some time together. Are you sitting at a computer? Are you listening while you're doing something else? Like I know podcasts work because you can listen while you do other things. And I, I, I'm beginning to get more and more attracted to the idea of podcasting and making things that people are long form listening to while they're doing other stuff because otherwise, how do you, how do you tell a story that takes four minutes in, so in, in traditional social media anymore. I look at some of my, my old content and I'm like, this all needs to be edited. This all needs to be re-edited, you know? Hmm. So I'm grateful for your attention and the time that we spend together because I really enjoy the kind of, the presence of, all in one space, not all looking for the next thing to, to, to make us a little, a little hit. Uh, Natasha says, I'm a podcast addict. Oh, wait, did I just, I didn't mean to add you to a blog. I don't want to do that. Okay, good. Sorry, I hit a button. I thought I was going to add somebody to a block list. I'm like, I don't want to do that. Gerbert says, I'm usually just waking up, getting my scrolling time in. This is engaging because we're here live and you've got a lot of great stories and experiences that you share. Thanks, Gravat.
Gracie says, I have a lot to express and have been thinking lately how I can do it in a proper way. Kerbot says, I also like the practice of gratitude. Yeah, I think that there is something about seeing this as something separate. This is part, like the way I see it, this is this is a a a self-care practice. You know, if I spend some time in the morning with you um, thinking about gratitude, that's good for me. You know, that doesn't that doesn't feel anything like if I spend 30 minutes scrolling, that feels totally different. But 30 minutes spent listening to gratitude, sharing gratitude, thinking about intentions for the day, that feels like like going to a yoga class. Maybe we should do yoga while we're talking here. Mm. You know, actually years ago, I thought about that, that, that I should learn, I should be take teacher training to be a yoga teacher so that I could tell Hug Nation stories, you know, during yoga classes, but I never did it. Uh, I think that's probably the wrong reason to become a yoga teacher. <laughs> I got to do a whole new mic system if I'm going to do yoga. Good point. Um, and I wonder, that there's also something about this being live, you know, that is a different thing than a podcast. I I don't know if anyone's listening to this archive, this recording, you can tell me like, do you, does it, does it matter to you that this is, this already happened before? Is it still, um, does it still feel like I'm talking to you or is, cause I've been wondering about if I should do like, if I should do something like this, but without not live and see how that feels when re recorded that way. I don't know. I shouldn't think too much. I think that's the answer. Okay, we've now been going a lot longer than I planned. So thank you for bearing with me and adding your good vibes and your energy. And if there's any last gratitudes that people want to share, I'm grateful that it is such a beautiful time of year in San Diego and that it's it's warm but not hot and still an opportunity to wear long sleeves. Oh, good morning, Jax. Welcome. Good morning, Eric. Juan says, you have so much beautiful things to say. Your truth is so clear and peaceful. I listened to your gratitude several times after it's over. I think that I already used them as a podcast. Oh, I love hearing that. Thanks, Juan. Sarah says, I appreciate being fully present and listening to live authentic communication and connection with high vibe community. Love the shares and your subjects, gratitude practice, funny, real, vulnerable. Oh man. Thank you for these answers. Tosh says, I'm grateful for your existence in the world. It's a better place with you in it. I think that's true for all of us here. And I think that's kind of the, the, the theme of our gathering is like, what, what could we do as we start this day to make this world be better by the end of the day because of us? Whether that is self-care or kindness, I think that's the only way that I can make sense of this particular consciousness experience of being human. I certainly can't take on the idea of like, okay, let's fix the world. But you can make it a little bit sweeter, a little bit more loving. Align with love, be present, have integrity, amen. Gracie says, I'm grateful we're all alive, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And as you say that, I'm also grateful that we don't live forever. I am grateful that a life is temporary. And I'm grateful that as we live, we get to witness others die because we get to see how precious it is. We get reminded of the, the unfathomable miracle and opportunity of being alive in this universe. And for us to really pay attention and recognize the gift, you have to know that it's not forever. In fact, I, I would 
my ponderings on eternity have really brought me to a place of like, oh my gosh, that sounds horrific. Eternity sounds like hell. Um, so thank goodness for, for preciousness. Thank goodness for being alive. Thank goodness for those who are not with us that got to show us the brief, fantastic lesson plan of, of, of being alive and how unique and different they are. Natasha says, yes, my nine-year-old still wishes to live forever from her youthful perspective. I am grateful I don't have that yearning anymore as I've gotten older. That's a, that's a heavy one, you know, and I, I but I, I really, yeah. I mean, as we're getting into this sci-fi sci stuff about the opportunities to live forever or to, you know, upload a consciousness and have that live forever, I, I have no desire for that. Oh, dear. Oh, gosh. No, 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 no. No, thank you. Uh, Jack says, the language in the authentic community is different. I'm grateful to come here and be immersed in that language because it he helos me to the beauty where I can't get it in my day-to-day -day conversations. I'm so grateful for you all. Thank you. Oh, it helps me. It helps me to see beauty. Sorry, that makes more sense. Bye, Daniel. Ooh, dreams may come, Gracie. Yes, I, I've had that movie come up in conversation lately. I haven't seen it in so long. I, all I remember is painting backgrounds. I should really see that again. Natasha says her daughter keeps saying, asking for a, a pill that will help us live forever. I mean, I get that on one level. And, and uh, I also understand that uh, this is, ugh, I feel like I could talk a long time about this because so the that is rooted in ego attachment, right? In 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 this this attachment to identity and this attachment to our unique personal memories and experiences, and those are the same things that make life suffering. You know, it is the same attachment that fills consciousness with so much pain, and. That's that's kind of the 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 game of it, right? Is that uh, yeah, as you grow, you want to detach a little bit from that attachment to your personal experience of of, of existence, so that you can have a little distance and a little bit of awe and appreciation without so much attachment to what your unique perspective needs to be happy. You, know, you get a very specific, like the, when you have like, I need this to be happy. Ugh, that's, that's the recipe for suffering, including being alive forever. Um, but I think as, as, as if you, you know, surrender, fall into open to a spiritual path where uh, where your specific consciousness is is a part of a bigger collection of consciousness or a wider consciousness, or you see that you are an aperture in a larger, you know, collective intelligence, then you don't want to be trapped in a single aperture forever. That's like, <laughs> that just doesn't sound like very fun. I guess I needed to talk today. Thanks for thanks for chatting with me. Well, I will put what dreams may come on the on my watching list. I'm also eager to watch Three Body Problem, which is now on Netflix. Uh, that book kind of rocked my world. And so I'm eager to see what it's like as a as a, an, a show. 
Grace says, we take so much not intentional for granted. And this live centers us. Thank you. Ah, well, with that, as we approach close to an hour together, if you've been here, let's have a hug. So wherever you are, give yourself a squeeze. Feel yourself holding this body, having a moment of recognizing what a crazy thing this is to be inside a living entity filled with living entities. I mean, hold on for a second. So we are this breathing, heart pumping meat, living thing with consciousness inside it. And yet within this breathing thing, we have trillions of other organisms. We have a gut that does, it, it does not function without other things, living things inside us to help us break down our foods. And not only that, that it affects our minds. Our thoughts are affected by the things inside the other organisms that, that are not a part, not directly connected to us, but yet we cannot live without them. So we are part of this whole ecosystem. And we feel so singular in this conscious experience. Yet we cannot exist without our environment. Put a plastic bag around you. You will die in minutes because we require the gases that are off put by the plants. We require the food that is created by sun energy going to plant to plants, which is in animals. You do not exist in a vacuum. But it's fun to enjoy this experience from this vantage point and to play this character. We are the game itself, but we play it and experience it. And that's the fun of it. But I don't want to be this character forever. But it's fun to interact with other characters and to share our experiences and get to witness and celebrate the gratitude we share and the wisdom that we uncover and the reminders we give to give to one another. Because we forget. We remember we forget. We fall into mundane physical ego awareness and then we remember connection and divinity and oneness and then we forget then we enjoy the, the game of trying to win something or fix something and then we remember that it's all perfect and then we forget and we miss somebody and then we remember and we're all one ah oh, so grateful to share this with you to be in this classroom with you to be in this gymnasium getting our spirits stronger together spotting each other when we can't lift the weight so let's just take a moment of appreciation for this moment together, whether we're in a state of forgetting and fear or remembering and love. Take a deep breath in and squeeze one another. <sighs> On behalf of Grandpa Caleb, Thank you all for joining us today for this love morning, for being a part of Hug Nation. I love you. Have a beautiful day. <sighs> we are an ecosystem, right? It's fractal. Hmm. Thank you for the good vibes and the affirmation. Thanks, Juan. Thank you, Gerbot. Thank you, Razorblade. Thank you, Natasha. Love you too, Dana. <sighs> Happy Saturday, everyone. <laughs>